Hello everybody, welcome again. Today we are assembling a, another machine. This one will be the CNC Genmitsu, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's the 3018 Prover, but I already unpackaged everything. Let's go ahead and assemble it together. Feel free to assemble it with me along in the video. This is my first time as well, and we'll see how it goes. First thing you wanna do is cut off the zip tie. That's to hold the everything in place during shipping. And you want to go ahead and install the two bolts there in the middle bearing. And then just make sure everything is tight. You never know what happens during shipping. Stuff gets jogged around, moved around. Go ahead and install the two Y-axis limit switches. And then you want to double check, make sure it clicks. Everything clicks, everything's good to go. Then the two uh, little holders there for cable ties. Later on, we go ahead and organize everything. They just screw right in. Uh, now looking at the gantry. We need to put on the X limit switches. So the one here on the motor side gets the two spacers just to kind of offset it there. And those just get screwed in nice and tight, make sure the limit switch works. Uh, again, on the gantry is these little pieces that hold the cable ties. Same thing on the inside of the gantry. Um, all these locations are in the instructions. Now let's install the other side limit switch. This one does not have spacers. It just connects directly to the aluminum plate there. Um, now for the gantry attachment, we want to use this little acrylic piece. And the way I found simplest is to use a tiny little Allen and go ahead and move those, uh, I guess you could say nuts in place. And once you get to the top, you can go ahead and copy the bottom over, double check it. As you can see here, I, I get them a little short, so I extend it a little more. Get them where I want, and then move everything over. And voila, perfect. So after that, go ahead and put on the gantry. And make sure you use that acrylic piece as a little setup there. Uh, once you get one bolt in, they all should fall right into place. And then as simple as putting them in, spin around. And I did put the four feet on the bottom. I don't know if I showed that step or not. But here I'm just finding the bolts. Once you get one bolt in, they all go in. And that little tool is very helpful. Go ahead and tighten all the bolts. And then we went ahead and install the spindle. Make sure you loosen it up quite a bit. Uh, I had to loosen up three or four times, you can see here. Go ahead and install the spindle. Make sure the plus and minus are the correct way. Then tighten it. Obviously, don't over tighten it, it's just plastic. And second to last thing for the uh, mechanical part is to put on the bolts and nuts for this kind of like little guard acrylic blue piece here. Just make sure when you tighten them that the nuts lock in vertically. That's a really big deal. You can see I had to go and fix a couple because they weren't locking in. You want all four to lock in and not not too tight. It's All it's doing is it's kind of just a, a dust shield. Um, kind of redundant but it looks cool I guess. So make sure they all lock in. Uh, that's again that's a big important part you'll see that again here for the motor uh, not the motor but you can see uh, just pulling these off there's no need to keep them on anymore and then kind of last but not least for mechanical stuff is installing the kind of brains here that just installs on the back I use my calipers to go ahead and measure that out and make sure that's all correct Make sure you can see it kind of twist and lock there. Make sure those nuts lock. That's very, very important. If they're not locked, they're not holding anything. And also be very easy when you tighten. You can crack it. You can see I cracked one of them on accident. Now for the wiring, I'm not going to go too in detail with the wiring because I can't do a better job in the instruction manual. Um, it lays everything out perfectly with pictures where everything plugs into. But I will add to be very, very vigilant that you're plugging wires into the correct side and you're running them correctly for all the limit switches there's one two three four five limit switches and three motors and then the spindle wire just make sure everything's getting plugged in in the correct way as you can see I'm double checking everything here um, as you'll see on your machine uh, it's written down on the little uh, board there Everything plugs in, make sure no wire, make sure everything's ran just how the instruction manual is as you're, you know, reading it and following along with me here. Um, 
again just more wiring you can see I'm actually going through along with you guys and learning it as I go and then after this going to go ahead and pop on the blue um, kind of like they hold hold the wires in place there's two of them I'm just going to show what I did for my final um, make sure all the wires are secure you don't want anything loose and jiggly everything's good to go you want to I'm gonna I want to use the offline controller so here I'm testing the y-axis I'm gonna test the x-axis and then I'm going to test the z-axis make sure it goes up and down make sure I didn't wire anything in backwards and if you hit select go to control and enter go down the spindle it'll fire up and then hit enter again and turn it off let's just test everything worked well for me I want to go ahead and put in put on the safety again and go back to the main screen I hope you enjoyed today's assembly video it's all assembled uh, I have a case that I bought for it I'll link that down below to help with the dust because I am in a room just to help control temperature and humidity but please let me know any questions you have thank you